children um, some skill sessions. What? Okay. Hey guys, wait. Hey guys, it's Cleo. I'm the assistant coach for Revolution Soccer Coaching. I work with Dean, Lucy and Anthea to do some skill sessions with uh, kids on weekends. Um, we think it's really important to have a majority of female qualified coaches. Uh, we aim to not only inspire young boys and girls to get into playing, get into coaching, but we also want to encourage both playing and coaching, especially for young girls. We want to show that not only can not only can you play, but you can definitely coach, get your licenses as we have. Um, yeah, we just want to inspire the next generation and so hopefully we can see some more female coaches coming in the A-League, in the W-League and across the world. I just need one goalkeeper, not a whole team of them, okay? You're holding the post. Is that comfy? Okay, well, remember what I said. Okay. Alright, ready? Set, go! Oh, good tackle. Well oh, what well a great. save. All right, use this ball, guys. Hi, my name is Lucy and I'm a soccer coach at Revolution Soccer. Um, I think it's really important for females to get into coaching um, for a number of reasons. Um, as an experienced teacher, um, I work with students all the time on developing relationships, um, building respect, and something that I see um, has a really positive effect here is for um, young male players to grow and develop under female coaches. Um, it just develops that respect and understanding of um, social interactions and you know building that understanding of other people. Um, one of our main things here obviously is building team spirit, working amongst a team, cooperation, um, understanding you know winning and losing that kind of thing and in a supportive and understanding context um, they feel um, I guess safe to make mistakes and to learn from them and I feel that's really important in the development. Uh, at Revolution Soccer, 75% of our coaches are female and uh, it's, it's great to see the interactions between the players and the coaches and the positive relationships that have developed over time. Alright, can I get Edie Thomas, you go down the side, grab a ball. Grab a ball. Hi, my name's Dean Wixon, um, I'm the head coach and owner of Revolution Soccer. Um, and I'm also the head coach at Casey Comets in the newly formed VPLW. Um, I've previously worked in the UK at Charlton Athletic Women and in the MPL system with Galaxy United and latterly uh, Bayside United. Um, I've, got, I've got experience across the two nations obviously and uh, so to look at comparing the two landscapes, obviously in the UK a lot of clubs are connected to professional clubs. So at Charlton Athletic for example, the development squad played West Ham, Tottenham, Crystal Palace. Which, which gives that more air of superiority, I guess. Whereas in Victoria, the MPO is a licensed system, which allows community clubs to build a program to, to extend on. Something that would be great to see the movement of female football going forward is that more elite clubs take an interest in the female game so that we have more clubs along the lines of Boleyn having a senior men and senior women in MPL. Box Hill the same thing, South Melbourne as well. This is something that would align the clubs a lot more and be more in line with what, what happens in the UK. So it would be great to see more clubs and, and clinics like Revolution follow, trying to follow the lead and bring more females into the game. I've found I've done, I've taught my two youngest coaches how to coach in a certain manner, but their own individuality has made them extremely popular with our kids. Um, females, females in coaching is, is a massive market and it's something that I would encourage all clubs and clinics to get ahead of. It's, it's quite sad that in the MPL last season, in the 2019 season, not one senior coach was a female. This year, thankfully, Kat is back and, and in charge at one of the bigger clubs in Alamein FC, which is, which is great for the women's game. But it is still sad that out of eight clubs, only one is a female coach. And, and what we're trying to do at Revolution is build these players, build these coaches up to one day reach that level once their playing days are over. Um, and it's something that I'd like to see. There's a lot of female coaches in the younger age groups of MPL, but it doesn't seem to be translating into the under 19 and the senior age group. So I would, I would encourage all clinics, all clubs to really invest in coach education for female coaches to 
to a, a progressively mean that female football is dominated by female coaches and officials. The NTC programme, I believe, is a good system in terms of it's a centralised federation way of developing players. Sometimes the way that they try to get the players to play and stuff could always be adapted as the game's always changing. But the idea of a centralised system is a way to ensure a certain level of quality is gained. So the other NPL clubs may struggle and they're left alone an awful lot to do their own thing. We need that centralised system at the moment while we don't quite have the level of coaching in the NPL that we could maybe require. Um, another system that the, the Federation I know are very keen, Federation Victoria, Football Victoria, are very keen to progress women's football. And Kim Ontaliadors is very open in what he says about trying to progress the women's game. What, what we need to do is make a more formal way that clubs that are established in the men's game are more adept at taking this on and really push this side of the game to, to use their massive reputations as a great men's club and bring that into the women's game and, and make more equality in, in what we see of, of the game. So playing on the same first team pitches, something which I'm really eager to do at Casey Comets is put the first team women on the first team pitch. And just to make the players feel more integrated in football in Victoria as a whole. In the UK, there's, there's a system where players play at their clubs and there's a, there's a county league system. So the area they represent, they go off and represent them in national tournaments. This, this is something that's done in conjunction with the county FA and clubs. It's seen as a progression and clubs welcome their players going. In this, in this, count, uh, in this state, we don't seem to have that and clubs sometimes give the impression that their players are being ripped away. That's not what we need to have. We need to have clubs developing players and pushing players forward to improve them. And then a more, this more centralised elite development of players on a national stage. This is something which I, I think the Federation need to look at and, and explain to clubs why it's a positive, why it needs to happen. And clubs need to back this an awful lot more. Thank you very much for listening. This is I've been Dean Wixon. Uh, hope to see you soon, and I want to be at the forefront of everything good that Football Victoria are trying to do for the women's game. Thank you.